The internet is buzzing about a rare and kind of strange video that's recently emerged. Save those hands, you might get lucky later. We have Jay O'Rourke here to explain it. It's a video with Divine and Al Jurgensen from Ministry. So, uh, Jay, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. All right. Uh, so first off, Jay, give us your rock and roll bio in a nutshell. Well, this clip here is from 1981. I worked on a record with Al Jurgensen with a band called Ministry at that time. I played in a band called BB Spin that released the record in 1987. I played in a band called The Insiders that got a record deal with Epic and I produced that record and played on it. And since then I've done a lot of concert sound, a lot of studio work. All right, uh, hold on for one second, Jay. Cue the video. So um, how did you get involved with that project? I was working on a record with Al called Cold Life for a label called Wax Tracks that was here in Chicago. And they put out a single with Divine be called uh, I Was Born to Be Cheap. This is called Cheap, Born to Be Cheap, written by Tom Iron and Henry Krieger. And they called Al and wanted him to assemble a band, so he called me called a bass player named Marty Sorensen and a drummer named Steve O'George. And uh, we got together with a musical director that Divine traveled with and some horn players and some backup singers and put on this show at the Park West. I was born to be helpless. I was born to be cold. I was born to never do what I'm told. I was born to be shallow. I wasn't born to be deep. But of all the things, I was born to be cheap, cheap. Kind of a crazy question, but did you call him he or she? And uh, tell me what was he like? Uh, we called we called him she, <laughs> and uh, she was very nice, very sweet. She looks like Curly from the Three Stooges without makeup on, <laughs> and uh, everyone, all her assistants and people referred to her as okay, Divi. So it was kind of like, uh, when Al and I got there, we didn't realize we were supposed to be in the downstairs dressing room at Park West. So we went right upstairs to the main dressing room, and Divi's in there getting her makeup made, and it's like, hi kids, how you doing? You want some Coke? Yeah, maybe. You know, so a very, very nice person. Come on, everybody. I said, now let's play a game. So uh, you played the song The Name Game, right? Yes, we did. All right, tell me a little bit about that. Well, that was an old uh, sort of novelty song for kids where you would take a name and you would rhyme, you know, Anna Banna, Bo Banna, whatever. And the gag was kind of leading up to where Divine could, you know, say some racy stuff, you know, you know, dick, dick, big dick, you know, on and on and on, stuff like that. So I think that that was the flip side to the uh, I Was Born To Be Cheap single that was released. Now Jimmy with a B. Now you say the name again with an F, very plain. Baby! A P find the mode. A P find the mode. Then you say the name again with an M this time. Baby! And there isn't any name that I can't write. And uh, that's you and Al on the right there. You guys are wearing headbands. Well, I'm wearing a headband. That was at Al's suggestion. It was the 80s. He wanted me to wear makeup, and I, I wouldn't do it, so I, I went with the headband. So let's talk about Al Jorgensen. Um, what's he like? Uh, Al and I were, we were friends back then, and we worked okay. together. He was very bright, very talented guy. I found him very easy to work with. 
we were doing midnight sessions out at a studio called Head and West, which was in Schaumburg at the time. Yeah. So we would drive out there at midnight and work till about six in the morning. Um, I've always kind of thought one of the reasons I got to produce the record was because I owned a car and had a driver's <laughs> license. Let's talk about Divine for a second here, and it's obvious that she's not a singer. So was that a problem at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually it was a problem uh, with the name game because, you know, he was, she was running around taking people's names and then just coming right in with no sense of time or anything like that. So <laughs> I don't think anybody really expected any more than what we did, but I mean, honestly, the music is kind of terrible, I think. I have to ask you this question. Is that Daryl from Hall & Oates on the bass? <laughs> no, that's Marty Sorensen. He oh. played in a band called Special Effect with Al and a drummer named Harry Rushkoff who went on to be in Concrete Blonde. And their singer, Frankie Nardello, went on to be groovy man in My Life with the Thrill Co Cult. So, you know, some of these people have gone on to be pretty successful. The drummer at the show, Steve O'George, is a, a successful engineer and producer. He's worked with Sting, among other people. So, uh, I don't know what happened to Marty, and I could see why you'd say Daryl Hall. <laughs> but I don't think Marty would like that at all. In a minute, I told you, I am not through talking. Divine, she, uh, she handles the crowd a little rough there. Um, let's take a look for a second to see how she handles a few questions from the crowd. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, this creep over here used to call me in the middle of the night. Had to have my number changed. It's not his fault that he's creep. Will somebody shove a foot down his throat? He's got one everywhere else. Keep it up, keep it up, and you'll never get it up again. Wow, things were uh, getting a little ugly there. Yeah, well, people were heckling her, and I mean, I don't know if they were really heckling, they were sort of overzealous fans. Oh, it's you again. They're over there, the Looney Tunes, honey. You know, people were obnoxious. It was Halloween, uh, you know, 1981, lots of drugs, you know, in the venue and people. So people were, and I think that they waited till around midnight to start the show on purpose, so. On, uh, on that note, real quick, can you tell me a little bit what this scene was like backstage and uh, maybe a little details on the crowd. Was it a predominantly gay crowd? It was a predominantly gay crowd. Uh, the scene backstage was pretty typical for backstage, except, you know, lots of makeup and the costumes, you know, were being protected and whatnot. Um, so that was a little different, but it was typical of a backstage scene back then. Um, you know, lots of substances and alcohol and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. It was great. Um, I ended up being on the cover of Gay Life uh, as a result of playing this show, Divine, and me and a couple other guys, and they were like pulling me apart like I was Jesus or something, and Divine was leaning in and kissing, I was wearing a Divine t-shirt. So anyway, that ended up on the cover of Gay Life. I, uh, I've asked around to see if anybody had a copy of it, but nobody does. How it's you again? Divine points out a stalker in the crowd out there. Yeah, that seems to be continually going on. Um, <laughs> you know, at the time I didn't notice it that much, but you could see it in the clips. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that, but the uh, the guy was pestering her pretty good. Did you get your gift? No! Did you get your now gift? shut up! Give me a gift. You'll not get anything from me except my foot in your fucking mouth. She's a little, she's a little rude to her singers there too at times. Is everybody out here? Where are those three whores? 
Yeah, 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 a lot of shut up and stuff like that, lots of, uh, I think it's part of the shtick though, really. Jay, what was your overall impression of that night? Well, it was, uh, that was the first time that I played at the Park West, I think, which I think is one of the best venues in America, and I've toured and played a lot of them. I like that place very much. Uh, it was, it was just great. I mean, it was just so much fun and so wild. Uh, you know, I would do that every night. Playing, I like to play the name. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna do my favorite name. Okay, girls, the name is Chuck. Hi, Peter Hamilton, director of Network Standards and Practices, and I'm afraid I can't allow this to continue. What the fuck? What happened to the pretty girl? <laughs> well, my staff and I have been watching <laughs> these these so-called clips, as you call them, and uh, well, we've decided that it's filth. So what? I mean, <laughs> you think anything that you do on your news is any uh, cleaner than this? We hold ourselves to a very high standard, and, well, the standard that you held yourself to is what we call in our legal department utter filth. Okay, great. You have high standards. We were high. What's the big deal? Let me put this in a parable that you maybe understand. You, you get done with a, a rock and roll show. Uh, you go backstage, and, and there's, a, there's you know, a sex object that you want, and you wake up with VD. That's how I feel when uh, I see clips like that on my air. Well, none of those things have ever happened to me, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, then you live a filthy lifestyle, and <laughs> I want nothing to do with it. Fair enough. I don't want anything to do with you either. Great. Let's cut this now. Let's cut it. Cut it now.